interesting thing. The interesting thing is when I was a biology teacher, and still today I find in the public schools, they teach this as a part of the mechanism for evolution. But wait a minute. What is happening as you split up those populations and as animals die out and so on? You're losing information. You see, over a period of time, natural selection results in loss of information. specialization, you can even get to the stage where they can't interbreed anymore. And I've heard teachers say, see, that's evolution. If that's evolution, you're worse off because now you can't even regain the information that you had. Because now they can't even mix together anymore to regain all that original variability that they had. And see, the other thing to remember is, too, from our observations in, in the real world, Dr. Werner Gitt from Germany, in his book, In the Beginning Was Information, said this, There is no known law of nature, no known process, no known sequence of events which can cause information to originate by itself in matter. In other words, matter never gives rise to information. See, think about this. If you're going to change fish eventually into birds, okay, because evolutionists say fish into amphibians and reptiles, reptiles into birds and mammals and, and finally ape-like creatures and then finally man, think about fish and, and then think about birds. Fish don't have feathers, right? <laughs> birds have feathers. Uh, when, you, when you consider that, you say, well, somewhere information for feathers had to come into existence. Where's information for feathers going to come from? Well, Dr. Werner Gitt says information never comes from matter by itself. Matter doesn't generate information. Information comes from information, ultimately from an intelligence. And so you see, right there, evolution has a major, major problem. But of course, you know what they teach in the public school textbooks? Mutations. Who's heard of mutations? You all heard of mutations? Yeah. Mutate, well, poodles are mutations. But uh, <laughs> mutations can be copying mistakes when, uh, when reproduction occurs, copying mistakes in, in, in our DNA, or the, the genes. Uh, it can be due to x-rays and, and uh, things like that causing, causing mistakes. Dr. Uh, Lee Spetner, a fellow from Johns Hopkins University, his book Not By Chance, said this, all point mutations that have been studied on the molecular level turn out to reduce the genetic information and not to increase it. Then he goes on and says this, not even one mutation has been observed that adds a little information to the genome.
Do you realize what this scientist is saying? In all of his observations, mutations result in loss of information. They reduce information. They do not cause a gain of new information. Now, for evolution to occur, you've got to have new information being added into the system. In other words, so far, everything we observe in real science in the present goes against the idea of molecules to man evolution. But do you know what the teachers say or professors say? I've had students come to me and say this. They say, but wait a minute, Mr. Ham, our professor said there is an example of, of new information arising by itself. For instance, insects become resistant to poisons and bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Who's heard those particular examples? I'm sure many of us have. You know what, we need to have answers to those sorts of things. In fact, as we're teaching in our churches, you know, this is the sort of thing we need to be teaching in our churches at a level that, that students can understand. Because one of the sad things, often in our churches, we just teach the Bible and we don't connect the Bible to the real world. And so our children go out into the real world and the real world says, ah, oh, we teach science and that's got nothing to do with the Bible. And in our churches, we teach Bible and think that's got nothing to do with science. <laughs> so the world has separated God from science and, and we in our churches t tend to separate science from God. We've got to be able to teach our children to show them that we can use the Bible to make sense of the world, connect the Bible to the real world, and we've got answers for, for these questions that people bring up. And so when we teach them that God made distinct kinds of animals and plants, we can talk about natural selection or we can talk about mutations, and then we need to give them answers to these sorts of, of accusations as well. Uh, oh, you can't be right because bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Insects become resistant to poisons. Let me give you just a little insight here. With insects, back in 1978, Francisco Ayala wrote an article in Scientific American, and the situation, I believe, has not changed since then, talking about insect resistance. And what he's saying here is this. The genetic variants required for resistance to the most diverse kinds of pesticides were apparently present in every one of the populations exposed to these man-made compounds. In other words, insect resistance is an inherent resistance. It would be like as if you were all uh, mosquitoes in a swamp and we sprayed you with DDT. And some of you survived. Why? You happen to have the right variation of information in your genes to be resistant to that particular poison. The rest of you died out. And so now you have offspring and they inherit that resistance from you. So it's not that they become resistant. You've just eliminated the non-resistant ones, right? That's not an example of evolution. In fact, again, you're losing information. You're losing genetic material from, from, from a population. What about bacteria? Well, the same sort of thing can happen with bacteria. For instance, there was a historic Franklin expedition, and, uh, which uh, occurred about 150 years ago, and people uh, uh, died in the Arctic, and they were frozen, actually. And, and when they recovered their bodies, many, many years later, over a century later, they were able to revive some bacteria from their bodies and they found that they were already resistant to antibiotics that were invented long after the time they perished. Right, so 